Hello, my favorite mathematicians, and welcome to 4.2 Sales Tax and Tips. Our essential question today is how do I calculate sales tax and tips? Go ahead and grab your needed supplies, your writing utensil, your math notebooks, a growth mindset, and some determination as we tackle our learning goals, which are I can calculate sales tax and tip, and I can calculate the new total, including sales tax and tip. All right, so I'm sure you are familiar with sales tax and tip. You have probably heard this in real life, but let's take a moment and just kind of lay down a definition for sales tax. Sales tax is a tax that is applied to the purchase amount of some goods. Not all goods, and it's different state to state, but it is a tax that is applied to the purchase of some goods. It is a percentage of the sale price of that item, and even that percentage is different from state to state. But let's just dive right in. All right, our first problem says Anthony is getting ready for a camping trip. He found a new sleeping bag for $25, but there's a 5% sales tax. How much did Anthony pay in sales tax? So step one is to change the percent to a decimal. In this case, our percent, our sales tax, is 5%, and 5% as a decimal is 0 0.05 or 5 hundredths. So that is step one. Step two is to take that decimal that you just made and multiply it with the sales price. So in this case, we're taking that 5 hundredths, 0 0.05, and multiplying it by $25, which was the sale price of the sleeping bag. When we do that, it gives us our answer and tells us that Anthony paid $1.25 in sales tax. So two simple steps to calculate sales tax. Change your percent to a decimal and then multiply it by the cost of the item. Let's take a look at another one. Ricky loves to travel and he collects magnets from the different places he travels. He just bought five new magnets from Yellowstone because he couldn't pick just one. He spent $11.25 before the tax on these five magnets, and the tax there was 8.5%. So how much did he pay in sales tax? So again, step one is to change the percent to a decimal. 8.5% is 0 0.085. Remember, you can do that by doing one of two things. You can either divide by 100 or just take that decimal and move it two places to the left, which is the same as dividing by 100. Step two is to take that decimal we just got, that 0 0.085, and multiply it by the cost, in this case, $11.25. And the answer on this one is 0 0.95625. So we have to think about the fact that sales tax is money, and so we only want two places after the decimal, which is why the nine and the five are underlined. And so we have to look at the number immediately following, following that, the number in the thousandths place, and look to see if it will make us round up or stay the same. Since six is five or more, it's going to round it up, meaning Ricky paid 96 cents in sales tax. All right, let's look at a different one. Here we have Amelia. She's bought a new sweatshirt for her upcoming trip. That shirt is $24.99. There is a five and a half percent sales tax. How much did Amelia spend including tax? And so this problem is just a little bit different because it's not asking us to find the sales tax. It's wanting us to figure out how much she spent in all, including sales tax. So our steps are going to be just a hair different. Step one is the same. We're still going to change the percent to a decimal. So 5.5% as a decimal is 0 0.055. Step two is still going to be the same. We're going to multiply the decimal and the sale price. So in this case, 0 0.055 times $24.99. And take that answer and use it for step three, which is to add that answer to the sales price. Because remember that answer in step two, that gave us the sales tax. So in order to get her total bill, we're going to take the sale price and the sales tax and add them together. So we're going to take $1.37 and add it to $24.99 to know that Amelia paid $26.36 for the sweatshirt. All right, now that kind of problem, that is one way to do it. There is a second way to do it that I want to show you that kind of saves you a step. So this is the same problem, but in a different strategy, okay? All right, so step one is we're going to add 100% to the sales tax. Why are we doing that? Well, 
she is going to pay $24.99 for that shirt. She is going to pay 100% of that cost, but she's paying an additional 5.5%. So in total, she's going to pay 105.5% because she's paying 100% of the shirt cost, $24.99, and she's paying that 5.5% tax. So if we add those together, that gives us the total amount that she's paying, 105.5%. From here, steps are like what we just did. Step two is now we're going to take that percent and turn it into a decimal. So 105.5% is 1.055. Now, similar step to what we did before, step three is to take that percent and multiply it by the sell price. So 1.055 times 24.99, that gives us her total cost, which we know already is 26.36. So it's not really less steps, it's just reordering when you do them. You can either add the percents from the beginning, or you can wait until the end and add the tax, the tax to the original cost. Either way you're adding, it's just which one of those methods do you like better? Either one will work all of the time. You choose the one that makes the most sense to you, and that's the one I want you to go with. All right, so that was sales tax. So let's talk about tips now. This is another one that I am sure you are familiar with. I'm sure that you have heard parents, aunts, uncles, grandma, grandpas, adults talk about tipping someone. Maybe when you go out to eat, maybe when you get something delivered, maybe when you get a haircut, you might tip that person. A tip is simply an additional payment added to the price of a service. So that waiter is servicing you by bringing you your food and your silverware and your drinks and everything you need for your meal. The um, barber or the hairstylist is servicing you by cutting your hair and styling it for you. The, when you have something delivered, that's a service of it coming to you. So it's just an additional payment that is added to the price of a service of something. Now, the reason I'm throwing all of this into one lesson is because tips are um, a percentage, just like sales tax, and they are actually calculated the same as sales tax. So this isn't anything new. We're going to work these problems exactly like we just did sales tax. Okay, because you're adding to the original cost. So here's our first problem. While on vacation, Mitchell went out to eat at his favorite seafood restaurant. His bill was $32 and he left a 15% tip, which is um, average. How much did Mitchell tip the waiter? So step one, just like before, we're going to change our percent to a decimal. In this case, we're changing 15% into a decimal, so 0.15. We're going to take that decimal in step two and we're going to multiply it by the original amount or the bill in this case. So 0 0.15 times 32 means that Mitchell tipped the waiter $4.80. All right, our next problem, Mr. Davis decided to get a haircut before his upcoming trip. We got a lot of traveling going on here. I like it. The haircut cost $25 and he left a 20% tip. So what was his total bill? So this is another one where it's not asking you for how much the tip was. It's asking you for how much he spent in all, his total bill. And so I'm going to use in this one that second strategy where I'm going to go ahead and step one and add 100% to the percent because he's paying 100% of the haircut. He's paying that $25, but he's also paying 20%. So I'm just going to add those two together. That's the strategy I'm choosing to use. The other one where you add at the end would work as well. Step two is to take that percent and change it to a decimal. So 120% as a decimal is 1.2. Step three then is to multiply the decimal by the price or the total bill. In this case, it was $25. 1.2 times 20 means that in all total, Mr. Davis paid $30 for his haircut, and that includes his tip. All right, mathematicians, that is the end of 4.2 sales tax and tips. I hope you can now answer our essential question, how do I calculate sales tax and tips? Let me go ahead and give that shout out to Amy Grosbeck, Amanda Newsom, and Wright Lovely for their amazing fonts and clip arts. Mathematicians, go forth and be amazing.